Welcome to Insights. I'm Eric. Thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about quality spreads today or the, uh, the spread between uh, junk bonds and high-grade corporate bonds. Um, they, it, it gets thrown out there a lot inside the internet and the spectrum of trading. Uh, sometimes the analysis is appropriate and sometimes it's, uh, it's a little bit off um, in terms of how it should be used. Uh, I do quality spread reviews, but I haven't done one in a while. Uh, I came across that tweet that suggested that the quality spreads were the lowest we've um, we've ever seen, or at some of the lowest levels in recorded history. But uh, that's not true, um, and I don't mean to suggest that that person is trying to lie. It's probably they don't have the data that goes back long enough. Uh, this chart represents um, the quality spreads and the quality spread cycles, uh, the one through four. There's many types of uh, computer tracks, several of them. Here's one through two, this is one through three, and this is the combination of, uh, of those one through four into a mean score, similar to the dividend and yield cycles. This stuff is as important as the dividend and yield cycles included in the matrix. Uh, I, what I would like to do is talk about how uh, the computer uses it, how you should look at it, and how maybe clear up some of the misunderstanding. So the question is, Is it, are we at a very low spread? Here we are, right about here. The computer's not even highlighting uh, bullish or bearish yet, um, but we're right about there. And, and clearly, if I move these lines up and down, it's right about there. Um, we can see that the 1990s, they were lower for an extended period of time. They were lower here in 2014. And they were significantly lower a long time ago. Um, here in, I don't know, this has got to be the 60s. I'll see if I can have it pop up at any point. Uh, and this is in the 50s and the 40s. The spreads had dropped quite a bit. Uh, it, the date isn't as important as much as we can go lower. These bands mark these zones. Uh, when they spike, uh, when quality spreads spike, which means the junk yields um, skyrocket relative to high-grade corporates. It usually marks a period of illiquidity, uh, trouble, but it usually marks the end and recovery of the stock market. As we see, if we highlight these zones, whether they be from 2 sigma or 1.61 sigma or even 3, um, we can see here it, it narrows them down. You can see how the surge of the spike. But the, the very few ones that are greater than three standard deviations, they mark lows in the stock market and usually significant ones of which we take off. If we bump this up to two standard deviations, you can see there's even more of those periods, but they're almost always. And, and, and it, it is one of the best timing tools out there. When you get a yellow, or a, uh, sorry, it's not yellow, but a white box, it represents extreme dislocation. I know that people believe, well, the Fed's just going to come in and save today. Uh, perhaps they do that, but it usually, the extreme is the computers tracking the relative movements of all four of the cycles. And when they reach these types of readings, it almost always marks the end. At this point, we're down here close to the yellow line. Uh, we, we can go lower than this in terms of uh, in, in terms of the downside. If we switch this to a bear, you can see that none of the readings go below two sigma ever. Uh, at the most, we get readings above one, and here we've highlighted them. These are major points of which trouble starts to form, but you can see that trouble starts to develop. Yields get low, and they can stay low for a long time. And they highlight mar periods of which uh, things look really easy and, and things look good, but we haven't even reached that. And it doesn't even mark a peak in the stock market. It marks a rising escalation of risk, but it can take decades for that to turn down. I mean, a, a, the market was, in terms of the cycle, the market was vulnerable about 1924 to 25, 28, 29, and the stock market kept going. But the point is, is that the spreads, even where we are, these, this level here in terms of the cycles, we need to get below the yellow line. And even then, we could be four or five years out before the stock market would roll over in terms of liquidity crunch. So when it comes down to the 
timing models for this, it's it's a reflection of more of the liquidity that's within the system rather than a timing for the equity markets. But the stock market or the economy is functioning fairly well when it's down low and it can stay low for quite some time. The nominal level can drop quite a bit lower and the cycles can drop a bit lower. Perhaps if things go really crazy, um, you're going to see a reading that's above one or above two, which we don't see. But it's possible that we could have things so well that um, it gets jammed up and pushes way down here. It would be rare. The quality spread goes back to about 1919. Um, you can backfill it um, and create it again with railroad uh, bond issues, but it's not as robust as the current form. Moody's publishes back then. Uh, it still publishes it today. So this is a long-term history. So the suggestion that we're in trouble because yields are in, at a really low point right here, number one, that's not true. Two, even if it, they were here or go lower for, uh, you know, way down in here, it can stay that way for uh, months. It can stay that way for years before trouble eventually causes a liquidity crunch, which then hits the stock market and creates a panic. This is all translated into the EAC which uses this in order to define the direction of the economy. It's far better at, use, at determining that than it is uh, uh, trying to time the stock market. Again, the value for the time in the stock market is when things are terrible. And if we go back to that, these yellow highlights, and I'll let you know when this comes, and you can see it. It's one of the best timing buying tools that's known on the planet. I've never seen one of these readings where the stock market doesn't rally on it. It's, it, the, the track record for over 100 years is, is perfect, but we saw one last one in 2020, of which many people ignored that. We're taking off from there. Uh, it's, it's not too much at creating top indicators. It, I can tell you when we're down here, it's more of a problem, but it's a problem that can last for many months and years still before it translates into a panic. There's other things that translate into a panic has to do with confidence and and that's why you tie all these things together that's why the computer does it um, the com computer's eac which is the economic activity composite is a combination of many things and quality spreads is one of them and quality spreads is an important one so when you see that on the internet and you seek discussions about it learn to frame that uh, you can find these numbers the one through four cycles inside the matrix if i have a copy of the matrix i'll Pop it open here quickly and I'll show you. They're way down in the long term cycle section. This is, which is down in here. You can find them across over here. Moody's quality spreads. And the one through four cycles are right here. We're looking for a mean cycle that's way lower than this. And we're not, it's, this is not a problem yet. Um, you can see the maximum, uh, maximum pain and panic was 2008, 2009. And the maximum, uh, 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 liquidity was about 1925 and of course it didn't create a panic until about four years afterwards so keep an eye on this we'll keep an eye on this number here relative to this number relative to the extremes and you can click uh, and, and and that will produce the chart when these things start to pop up and comments are changed and they're highlighted I generally create some type of review that discusses any types of changes but this is where the quality spread stands. I th hope everyone now has a better understanding of them. It's not what you think. It, it's a lot more powerful than what people think, but it's not what you think in terms of timing, and it's not definitely in terms of what you think in terms of timing the, the equity markets. If you have any questions about what we talked about, um, contact me directly at the blog. Follow me down. Write some comments. Subscribe to this. This is an open content. Subscribe to these channels. If you don't subscribe, then I won't be putting too much open content up. Uh, what's the point? Uh, there's the whole point is to generate a following, and if it's not working, we'll we'll keep putting the videos up for subscribers because they um, they come and watch either way. But I'm hoping to bring this out in the open to try and not to embarrass anyone. It's hard. Economic data goes back a long time. And unfortunately, a lot of today's analysis stops at about 19, you know, 2000, 1990. If, if you've got a deep database, it goes back till 1990, but history goes far, far deeper than this. I have data that goes farther back, but it's not as robust, so I don't show it. But that's where we stand with the quality spreads. Keep an eye on them and, and enjoy the rest of the trading day.